Hello, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today we're going to be talking about screen replacement using M-Tracker Surface, but I don't look happy here. Let me fix that. There we go. All right, I'm going to show you how to do this. On to the tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over masking as well as screen replacement. So if we were to add M-Tracker Surface from our effects, you can see that we are going to get some on-screen controls here and then some controls over in our inspector. Now, I want to really quickly show you what would happen if we were to try to track this screen without a mask. So I'm going to go to my Bezier shape here and I'm just going to very quickly draw a shape over the screen. So there you go. And we're going to open our tracker and let's track forward. And you can see as soon as my hand passes in front of the screen that we're tracking here, it gets really, really messed up and warped and that is just not going to work. So we need to add a mask on our hand prior to tracking here. So I'm just going to delete M-Tracker surface and apply a new instance. I'm going to bring this over where my hand is purely visible. And so we're going to track forward and backward. So over in our inspector, you see we have our image layer. We need to add a mask layer. So I'm going to add new layer. And now you can see that the mask is what we have selected. And you can see that also in your on-screen controls. Now I'm going to draw a sort of a rough shape around my hand because I want to get all of that. And then we are going to come back later and refine this mask so that the hand will pass cleanly in front of the iPad. So let's go ahead and just add a very rough and basic shape here. And we're going to give the mask a bit more information so we're going around the hand so that any blur or even hair on the knuckles anything like that is going to be taken into account let's close that off and i'm going to pull this down and now you can see that my hand is fully surrounded by this mask we're going to go ahead and open our tracker we have automatic selected so we can track forward first and as soon as that hand passes out from in front of the iPad I'll no longer need to track so let's bring this over and it's out of the way so we're just going to click stop and then we're also going to track backwards and do the same thing so as soon as the hand is no longer in front of the iPad we can go ahead and click stop so let's see how that does very good cool and it passes in front and then it is gone and we're in good shape so now i'm going to go to the very beginning of my clip here and i'm going to go back over into my inspector let's click image and we can click our bezier and we can go ahead and draw our bezier i'm actually only going to draw around the screen itself because that is the section that we are going to be replacing so there you go and i'm going to just feather that off just a little bit with our on-screen controls and that's going to take into account some of the pixels on the outside of that screen as well all right Go to our tracker and now we can track forward. So you should see that now that the mask is around my hand, the screen here is in good shape. It's not distorting or anything because it's not taking into account that motion that the hand was creating. All right, so let's see how that goes. All right, the track is in good shape. Now what we can do is go ahead and add the image that we're going to add. So let's go over we have our image layer selected. Let's go to our drop zone and we are going to populate this with me not smiling, super angry. Let's click apply clip and we need to do a bit of work on this image to get it looking as if it's actually there on the screen the way it's supposed to be properly. So we will just use our image distortion tools here. 
And there you go. Now that looks pretty good. We are moving very quickly, but now you can see that that image is in good shape. It is sticking nicely to the iPad. And now we need to fix the hand because obviously, as you can see, all of this is not going to work. We need to refine our mask. So I'm going to go back to my mask layer and we are going to go ahead and set keyframes and I'm going to just very quickly refine these points. So if you hold down command and drag, you can actually add those curves in now. So I'm going to just do that around my hand. I'm going to set all of these by holding command and dragging out so that I can really refine those edges. And then I can also use my feathering tools, as you can see here, to add a little bit of blur back into the image. All right, and you can now see that I have gone through and I have just very quickly changed those keyframes to follow the hand. And then I also want you to notice that the mask disappears here. So let me show you what I've done. Let me open up my resizing tools here. And you can see that I have set a keyframe over off camera. And then we just set one keyframe so that that mask would follow the hand. And then again, another keyframe gone. That way it is not going to obstruct our iPad whatsoever. And that looks nice and clean. Added a little bit of feathering as you could see earlier. I'll mention as well that you don't have to set keyframes on every single frame because this has already been tracked. You just need to move down the timeline, maybe 10, 15 frames, set your frames to go around the hand and then continue down. So you should only actually be setting around maybe seven, eight, nine keyframes at the most. But the track itself is holding true, so really nice. Now let's make our image look a bit better. So let's go ahead and fit again. I'm going to go back to my image. Let's go ahead and quickly go to our image effects. And I'm going to turn on my blur, motion blur, and a bit of grain. And that is going to just help make this look a little bit better and a little bit more realistic there. So now we're following through. And then I go and I tap. So this is where it gets a lot of fun. I'm going to duplicate this clip by clicking option, click and drag up. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to change my drop zone on this top layer to the smile. There you go. Let's click apply clip. Then I'm going to blade cut, disable this top clip. So now we can see that the hand passes in front click and then now i'm smiling how fun if you have never checked out our tutorial that is primarily about drop zones i encourage you to look at that because you can also use compound clips inside of drop zones and you can have video playing and stuff like that so of course you're not limited to still images or anything like that you can absolutely use video inside of these drop zones as well within m tracker surface and all of the same parameters have stayed true. So the blur, the grain, all of that good stuff, the mask is all still there. Really fun. And then for the intro, I did add one more layer and I just added the onto the tutorial. But again, you can see how that works. And that was a very quick and easy way to mask out the hand so that you can track and then refine those tools. There's one more thing I do want to show you in regard to the mask and the keyframes that we set. If you will right click on your clip, you can actually go in and show video animation and you're going to see in the keyframe editor that these are the keyframes that were set. 
but it's only indicated by the double keyframe here. So you see there's two keyframes and then these are actually not any keyframes that were changed. You can see this is where we can add or remove, but that's also a great way to very visually see that we only added a couple keyframes here. Let's see, we added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then that last keyframe that just disappears. So those are the only actual keyframes that we had to add by going in and kind of refining and making sure that that mask is fully how we want it to pass in front of our video. All right, and that's about it from me. Thank you so much for checking out this tutorial on M Tracker Surface, which is now available through motionvfx.com. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.